the lost city of Atlantis. First mentioned by the ancient Greek philosopher Plato more than 2,300 years ago, is known as one of the oldest and greatest mysteries of the world. According to Plato, the Utopian Island Kingdom existed some 9,000 years before his time and mysteriously disappeared one day. Famed for having been the exhibit of all worldly pleasures in the world, this city is as enigmatic as it is inviting. Even after years of research, the exact truth about this city has not been found, and that adds even more to all the folklores attached with it. Watch until the end to find what's so fascinating about this city. Plato's Krisha says he heard the story of Atlantis from his grandfather, who had heard it from the Athenian statesman Solon, 300 years before Plato's time, who had learned it from an Egyptian priest, who said it had happened 9,000 years before that. Whether or not Plato believed his own story, his intent in telling it seems to have been to boost his ideas of an ideal society, using stories of ancient victory and calamity to call to mind more recent events, such as the Trojan War or Athens' disastrous invasion of Sicily in 413 BC. The historicity of Plato's tale was controversial in ancient times his follower Cranter is said to have believed it, while Strabo, writing a few centuries later, records Aristotle's joke about Plato's ability to conjure nations out of thin air and then destroy them. Ignatius L. Donnelly, who was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1831. Donnelly considered Plato's account of Atlantis as largely factual and suggested that all known ancient civilizations were descended from this lost land. Assuming the Atlantic Ocean was only a few hundred feet deep, Donnelly described a continent flooded by shifting ocean waters that sank in the exact location Plato said it did. In the Atlantic Ocean just outside the Pillars of Hercules, the two rocks that mark the entrance to the Straits of Gibraltar. Long after modern oceanography and a greater understanding of plate tectonics poked holes in his shifting waters thesis. Some continue to cling to Donnelly's theory, mostly due to its adherence to Plato's placement of Atlantis in the mid-Atlantic. Inspired by Donnelly, many later writers expanded on his theories and added their own speculations as to where Atlantis may have been. One of these writers was Charles Berlitz, grandson of the founder of the well-known language schools and author of many books on paranormal phenomena. In the 1970s, Berlitz claimed Atlantis was a real continent located off the Bahamas that had fallen victim to the notorious Bermuda Triangle, a region of the Atlantic where a number of ships had supposedly disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Supporters of this theory point to the discovery of what look like man-made walls and streets found off the coast of Bimini, although scientists have evaluated these structures and found them to be natural beach rock formations. Another theory, that Atlantis was actually a much more temperate version of what is now Antarctica, is based on the work of Charles Hapgood, whose 1958 book Earth Shifting Crust featured a foreword by Albert Einstein. According to Hapgood, around 12,000 years ago the Earth's crust shifted, displacing the continent that became Antarctica from a location much further north than it is today. This more temperate continent was home to an advanced civilization. But the sudden shift to its current frigid location doomed the civilization's inhabitants, the Atlanteans, and their magnificent city was buried under layers of ice. 
Hapgood's theory surfaced before the scientific world gained a full understanding of plate tectonics, which largely relegated his shifting crust idea to the fringes of Atlantean beliefs. One of the more recent Atlantean theories concerns the civilization that flourished on the Greek islands of Crete and Thera more than 4,000 years ago. The Minons, named for the legendary King Minos. Believed to be Europe's first great civilization. The Minons built splendid palaces, constructed paved roads, and were the first Europeans to use a written language, Linear A. At the height of their power, however, the Minons suddenly disappeared from history and enduring mystery. That has fueled belief in a link between this great doomed civilization and Plato's Atlantis. Historians believe around 1600 BC, a massive earthquake shook the volcanic island of Thera, triggering an eruption that spewed 10 million tons of rock, ash and gas into the atmosphere. Tsunamis that followed the eruption were large enough to wipe out Minon cities throughout the region. A devastation that may have made the Minons vulnerable to invaders from the Greek mainland. Since many others proposed the location of the city of Atlantis in the Mediterranean Sea, narrations have come out scaling the size of the city to Crete, Greece's largest island. However, in many stories after Plato's era, the Atlantis was described as a giant city, missing anything specific about the size of the city. Edgar Case, an American Christian mystic, suggested that the Atlantis and Eurasia were equal in size. Most historians and scientists throughout history have come to the conclusion that Plato's account of the lost kingdom of Atlantis was fictional. According to this argument, the Greek philosopher invented Atlantis as his vision of an ideal civilization and intended the story of its demise to be a cautionary tale of the gods punishing human hubris. No written records of Atlantis exist outside of Plato's dialogues, including in any of the numerous other texts that survive from ancient Greece. Furthermore, despite modern advances in oceanography and ocean floor mapping, no trace of such a sunken civilization has ever been found. <laughs>